Fellow hobbyists, I'm sorry. That's the message that we got this week from two major hobby companies. I bet you thought this was all about how I wasn't putting out videos as regularly as I used to. No, this is more of a commentary on those two messages that we got. One of them was a straight-up apology. Another one was kind of an implied apology. But both messages, I think, landed pretty well, uh, at least for me personally. I don't know how you felt about it, but I thought these were pretty sincere efforts from two companies that are super important to our well, passion for most of us, major time sink for others, and wallet killer for us all. So I know this isn't the kind of video you typically find on this channel, but I thought they were important, I thought they were well crafted, and I thought they were worth talking about, at least a little bit. Now, normally I ignore all kinds of messages out of big corporations because, well, that's how they lie to you, and corporations lie. Like, all the time. They'll issue non-apologies like, Hey, sorry we killed a whole village in this country you've never heard of. Our bad. But also, it wasn't really our bad. If prices were better, we could afford to pay more and they wouldn't have died. Most corporate apologies are non-apologies. They're reframing. They're all kinds of rhetorical... Uh, efforts at getting you, the consumer, the customer, to calm down and keep buying the things that you buy from them um, without actually having to do anything different on their part. These I thought were pretty different. So let's start with the elephant in the room, Games Workshop. Sorry, we didn't get it right this time. I try very hard, you know, and sometimes I get it wrong. Not very often. In fact, this is the first time ever, but I try. <laughs> so, Games Workshop rolled out Mr. Workshop himself, or as he calls himself in this video, James Work Squat. Ha ha! Yeah, it was cute. Come on. And this was all about the apparent power imbalance with the new Leagues of Ultan army. Now, I'm one of those weirdos who buys a ton of Warhammer products, paints a ton of Warhammer products, but doesn't actually play with Warhammer products. I don't know, but I'm not alone. Apparently, the Leagues of Ultan Codex, squats, uh, came out and it was very imbalanced and they had to do some rules changes and a lot of people were upset because, hey, we just bought this codex and not five days after we paid 50, 60 bucks for it, you're changing it up. I get it. It's a bummer. It's part of the Warhammer 40k hobby. Not that it's excused, but we shouldn't be surprised. Now, there's two things I really liked about this message. One, they used humor in a very, I thought, effective way. Well, I don't feel bad anymore. They had Mr. Workshop talking about how this was his first time writing a codex. He was trying to give our short little friends a leg up in the tournament scene. And he was getting scolded by people who are game designers or other people who work at Games Workshop. It was an interesting framing. I thought it was cute. And more importantly, it highlights the fact that all those people working at Games Workshop, like James Workshop, they're humans and they're going to make mistakes. We expect that out of people uh, and we honestly, we expect that out of corporations. What we don't expect is for them to straight up say, we messed up. We're sorry. Our bad. We didn't get it right this time. We're going to fix it and here's how we're going to fix it. We'll be making some updates to the rules and bringing a few points in line. That's where I think this message really shines. They specifically said, we messed up, here's how we messed up, and here's what we're doing to fix it. Is it enough? I don't know. I don't play the game. Is it a bummer that you have to go sharpie all your codexes? Yeah. Could they maybe reduce the price on the codex that is now obsolete? Also, probably yeah. They didn't do any of that stuff. But at least they admitted that they messed up. So, you know, as far as corporate apologies go, 
pretty decent in my opinion. When we hear negative feedback about our products, it's something that we definitely and truly take to heart. When you talk, we listen. The second sort of apology comes from another large player in the hobby space. That's our, the, that's the army painter. Don't forget the the. Now this apology message had a very different tone from the Games Workshop message in that they didn't use humor. They used what I think they were trying to convey here was sincerity. Like, hey, look, we heard your feedback. We acknowledged it was negative and we're doing something about it. So, what was the issue they were apologizing for? So when we heard that our war paints were difficult to shake, we knew we needed to do something about that. Apparently, their paints are hard to mix. I guess, I don't know their army painters' paints are any harder to mix than any other paints, but apparently they've been listening to some of the major content creators in the hobby space. The army painter though left a lot to be desired. 50 seconds on the vortex mixer and it's still separated. Oh. But the quality of the paint honestly left a little something to be desired. I felt like I was fighting it more than I should have. Not a great start from army painter. And they've heard that the that people who are in the position to know aren't particularly happy with the quality of their paints. That I can understand. So they totally changed the formula on their paints and now they're gonna be beautiful and spread up. No, that's not what they did. What did they do? Last October in 21, I retrofitted every single paint machine with a mixing ball applicator. So every war paint since have had two mixing balls included in them. They added mixing balls. Oh, I, I, I already did that. And so does everyone who uses uh, the Army Painter paints and a bunch of other paints. The, the mixing balls is kind of a default behavior for any of us who do any painting. So, is the action that they are taking fi gonna fix the problem? I, I don't think it's going to. I'm pretty sure that Ninja and that fantastic dude that helps Squidmart do all his wonderful painting, I'm pretty sure they know. I'm pretty sure they know about the mixing balls and they've done that. And the paints are still not great. They're not bad, but they're not great. Army Painter sits very comfortably in the value side of the acrylic paints range, and that's, I think, why most people buy them. I know that's why I bought them. I use Army Painters not exclusively, but largely all of my painting is done with Army Painter paints, and that's because when I, got, when I first started the hobby, I looked around for something that was inexpensive and was relatively decent, and Army Painter fit the bill. Didn't hurt that they sold big old sets of paints. And perhaps most importantly, it wasn't $8 a bottle. Ah, oh, I'm looking at you, Citadel Color. But none of that is the important part of the message. The thing that I thought was very striking was that they had examples of these content creators, these super users of their products, actually talking about the things they didn't like. They had you know, Ninja right there on the screen. And I thought that was great. It's a positive, it's a, it's a specific concrete example of the feedback that they're reacting to. And that is something we need a lot more of in our corporate messaging. Okay, yeah, they spent an awful lot of time talking about their bona fides of all the awesome innovations that they've done to really alter the hobby space. I get it. Probably should have gone in some other video. This apology video it wasn't really the place for it. But I get what they're trying to accomplish. I will say I was a little disappointed that they didn't straight up come out and say, I'm sorry, you've never actually hear an apology. The apology is implied. They're basically saying, here's some negative feedback, we're acknowledging it, and we're doing something about it without ever saying, hey, we messed up. So, in terms of apologies, it's a little on the weak side. But at least they didn't pretend like nothing was happening and they were adding the mixing balls because they happened to have extra mixing balls. Like, none of that happened. It was straight up, we're reacting to negative feedback, we're doing something about it. They were hinting at things to come in the future, which, again, kind of lame, unless you have specific examples. But hey, at least they didn't announce a price increase and try to convince us that it was good for your wallet to pay more for the paints. The last little critique, they had a dude 
on the screen talking about how passionate he was, about how he's well positioned to understand. Would you consider yourself uh, a passionate man? What do you think? <laughs> I'd definitely say that I'm fairly passionate. Uh, and kind of relate to his gaming uh, clientele. They never told us who he was. I'm assuming he is the CEO or the owner or whatever. Um, they didn't tell us who he was. I don't know why he was important other than my assumption that he is one of the chief leaders of the Army Painter. So that's all it was. Those are our two apology messages from some of our most cherished corporate overlords. And I encourage more of the same. When was the last time a company that you do business with came out and said, hey, we messed up or we're doing better because you told us to do something? These two messages tell us that these companies that we cherish, they're listening to us, they think we're important, and that's a kind of progress. We should applaud this sort of effort and demand more of the same. So what did you think? Are they full of hot air? I believe them, but was there something that I missed that says, no, these guys are pulling your leg? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Either way, thank you very much for watching. This has been Your Average Bear Gaming. Have a wonderful afternoon. Be nice to yourselves and each other. Peace. I wrote it all myself. My favorite army? Well, absolutely. They're calling it the most powerful codex ever, which sounds like a good thing. No, I've never read another codex.